Hello, Next 50, Coach Valerie here. Grab yourself a cup of healthy goodness, sit back and join me for a chat on nutrition. Most of you have heard me say that losing weight is easy, followed quickly by it's the discipline that's hard. Truly losing weight is science, so it's straightforward. Since 2017, there has been a consensus on the best diet, and not surprisingly, this is determined by something else you often hear me say, eat real food and eat as close to the source as possible. So let's look at how the best diet is determined. Researchers look at nutritional density, sustainability, effectiveness, and easy to follow. First, nutritional density. Nothing, nothing should go in your body that is not nutritionally dense. Sure, there are exceptions like birthday cake, but eating food that has little to no nutritional value uh, is harmful to your body. And by body, I mean your five vital organs that you need to stay alive. These are your brain, your heart, your lungs, your liver, and your kidneys. Next comes sustainability. This means for both you and the environment. For example, can you safely eat nutritionally dense food every day for your entire life? Whereas a diet is considered a fad, for example, when it's meant to be short term, just to lose weight, or for an exclusive group of people, usually with a particular condition that is treated through diet. Then comes effectiveness. This is where the science comes in. A great deal of research is done on these diets to determine if they are effective, beneficial, and sustainable. Finally, is it easy to follow? If you have to buy certain foods, totally get rid of others, eat foods you don't like, or the reasoning behind the diet isn't quite clear, then you won't stay with it. And when you skip around from one diet to the next, the body responds by losing and gaining weight, which is the exact definition of yo-yo dieting. Now, consistently for the past five years, the Mediterranean diet has topped the charge as best diet. Coming tying for second place is both the DASH, which is designed to lower your blood pressure or hypertension. Once again, it's a special diet for certain populations. And then the next is the plant-based diet. So before you go run off to try one of these, let's look at what makes the best diet the best diet. So here it is, whole grains, fruits and vegetables, legumes, nuts and seeds, healthy oils and fats, some lean meat and fish. Can you see here why I always suggest that we eat real food and eat as close to the source as possible? When you eat whole grains, fruits and veggies, legumes, which are beans and peas and lentils and chickpeas, when you eat nuts and seeds, healthy oils and fats like olive oil and avocados with lean meat and fish, you simply can't go wrong unless you're overeating, which brings us something else to something else that I say, calories in, calories out. You see, Calories are fuel. Think your car. Calories are the fuel that makes your car body go. Because a car is an expensive item, you may choose to put either medium or medium grade or better grade into your car. In that your body is irreplaceable. It is far more valuable. It only makes sense then to put the best grade of fuel into it. So when I say calories in, calories out, I'm talking nutritionally dense calories, nothing else. Now, calories are utilized or burned three ways 
by order of importance. And this is your biggest takeaway in this video. The three ways are your basic metabolism or your BMR, your digestion, and your physical activity. Now, basic metabolism or the basal metabolic rate, BMR, is the most important part of your calories in. The majority, literally the majority of everything you eat and drink is used to sustain the basic functions of your body. And I'm talking your heart to carry oxygen and nutrients to the entire body and to pump your blood, your lungs to breathe and to be the primary organs of respirations, your liver to detoxify, synthesize, and metabolize. Your kidneys, which control bodily fluids to filter, to balance. And your brain as the central nervous system, which controls every other bodily organ, secreting vital chemicals and hormones and coordinating responses to change and mediating reflexes. Again, most of the calories you get from food goes directly to these five vital organs. So if you're not eating nutritionally dense food, then you're harming your heart, your liver, your brain, your kidneys, and your lungs. Which is why nutritional density is so important. You have to fuel your vital organs. Next in line, of importance there is digestion. Approximately 10 to 15% of all the calories you eat goes to digestion, the power of digestion. This is called the thermogenic effect of food, or TEF. And this thermogenic effect will vary based on the foods that you eat. Third in line of importance is physical activity literally third, because any leftover calories after basic metabolism, all the vital organs after digestion is used to fuel your physical activity, which does not mean the exercise classes that you join me for. I'm talking physical activity as getting out of bed, going to the bathroom, walking the dog and doing the dishes. Now, all of this, and I do mean all, <laughs> amounts to health, health. So it's not as simple as just calories in, calories out, but how the food you eat affects the various processes of your body, regardless of how many calories or lack thereof you put in your body. In fact, some of you have probably heard me say, I probably eat 3,500, 4,000 calories a day, but I only weigh 120 pounds. How can I eat that many calories and not be huge? It's because I'm eating nutritionally dense food. Okay, so calories also impact our hormones and our health differently. And hormonal imbalances actually uh, keep us from maintaining a healthy body weight. So take sugar, for example. When I mention that eating fruit daily is important, I often hear you guys back say, oh, but it's sugar. So let's look at glucose versus fructose, which are sources of calories in the form of simple sugars. Both glucose and fructose offer the same number of calories per gram, but the body metabolizes them in completely different ways. And here is that eat close to the source advice again. Natural sugars come with fiber and water and have no negative effects. So eat all the fruit that you want. Whereas processed sugars, processed sugars, those are linked to insulin resistance 
increased blood sugar levels and higher triglycerides and LDL, which is the bad cholesterol. So eat the apple and not the fried apple pie. So eat fruit and vegetables, eat whole grains and legumes, eat healthy nuts and fats because they are not only nutritionally dense, but they also include iron, magnesium, and calcium, and simply all those things your vital organs need. Okay, so what does nutritional density look like? It's really simple. Carbohydrates. You should focus on whole wheat bread, whole wheat pasta, and whole grain cereal. You should eat still cut oats and oatmeal, brown rice, white rice, wild rice. All the rices are good regardless of their color. Protein and dairy. Eat black beans, chickpeas, lentils, eat salmon, all other kinds of fish, shellfish like oysters and clams and scallops, sardines, liver, organ meat, uh, Greek yogurt, eggs, the entire egg. Don't separate the egg, eat the entire egg. <laughs> Next up are fats. Get those from almonds, avocados, chia, macadamia, pistachio, flax, olive oils, walnut oils. Next up, fruit. All of the berries, blue, strawberry, black, all the berries. Mangoes, peaches are some of the best. Veggies, arugula, asparagus, avocado, bell peppers, broccoli, bok choy, Brussels sprouts cabbage, edamame, garlic, kale, potatoes, all potatoes, pumpkin, seaweed, spinach, spirulina, seaweed. I eat a lot of seaweed. I love my seaweed. Um, carrots, tomatoes, zucchini. Eat lots of vegetables and fruit. Next up, sweets, dark chocolate. Yay. <laughs> Uh, Greek yogurt with added fruit. Do not, do not buy yogurt that has the fruit added. That is just a way for them to load in tons and tons of extra sugar. So buy your plain, regular uh, Greek yogurt and add your own fruit to it. Eat a whole wheat cookie with dark chocolate or make chia pudding. I'm a big fan of chia pudding. Hydration, water, water, water coconut water and electrolyte water. Now, putting it all together, how about some nutritionally dense meals? Well, I usually start my day with a nutritionally dense smoothie and I put in there one banana, a scoop of protein powder, regular milk. Don't buy low fat, no fat products, regular milk. I also add peanut butter and I add maca powder. Maca was actually used by the ancient South Americans and today still around the world for endurance. Uh, next up is breakfast. Just blend some fruit with some milk, boom, instant smoothie. Uh, eat a whole wheat bagel with cream cheese or have that piece of bagel or a whole wheat piece of toast with some peanut butter and fruit or make your own breakfast sandwich with uh, English muffin, eggs and cheese, or make some homemade protein pancakes with chopped nuts and fresh berries, or just toss in some walnuts with your oatmeal. Pretty simple. Next up is lunch. Have that sandwich for lunch, whole wheat bread sandwich with non-processed meat and cheese with some apple, some celery sticks, or have an avocado, tomato, and cucumber, and maybe a non-processed meat sandwich. So stick some greens on that sandwich, whole wheat bread. Next up, have a green salad, throw in some proteins, have a, a fish in there for your salad. Chicken is a great um, salad combination, tomatoes, hard boiled eggs, and a drizzle of olive oil. Get rid of all the salad dressings that you have right now. I mean, they're just loaded with salt and sugar and, and bad, unhealthy fats, not good for the vital organs. Snacks, popcorn. You cannot go wrong with popcorn unless you're buying the barbecue popcorn and all the other crazy popcorns. Buy regular straight popcorn or buy organic popcorn kernels. Pop it yourself. 
I will often sprinkle nutritional yeast on my popcorn. It gives it, gives it an umami buttery flavor. So it's very healthy, it's nutritional yeast. And popcorn has so much nutritional density. So it gets your crunchy, it kind of gets your salty, it gets everything that you need in there for, for a great snack. Other good snacks are veggies with hummus or some other bean dip I've made. Hummus is basically just chickpea dip, which is a bean dip. I've made black eyed pea hummus. I've made different kinds. Uh, next, fruit and cheese. Always combine fruit and cheese together. Um, it helps to stabilize the insulin levels in the body. So think, you know, apple with a piece of cheese, pear with cheese, um, even um, uh, uh, celery sticks with peanut butter. Excellent combination there. For dinner, you know, look at your chicken or turkey with green peppers, tomatoes, mushrooms. Um, my big favorite, I'm, I'm a big soup eater, um, buy really nice ramen noodles, um, throw in my own seasonings, and I throw in tons and tons of vegetables in them. So I'm getting this nice, healthy carbohydrate, fat, and um, vegetable you know, blend in there for my dinner. Um, also to uh, make breakfast for dinner. That's something else that we do in our house. Um, make ham and cheese omelets, for example, with whole wheat bread. Or our favorite, we make a lot of protein pancakes with berries, very yummy for dinner. So the bottom line, nutrient dense foods are rich in vitamins, minerals, and other nutrients important for overall health. Nutrient dense foods do not have saturated fat, added sugars, or sodium. Again, we're talking whole grain products, fruits and vegetables, all of them, legumes, nuts and seeds, healthy oils and fats, and some lean meat and fish. Don't think of um, meat as the main course of your meal, which is a very American idea, but think of uh, meat as, as a side dish, as one of the side dishes on your plate. Um, I can guarantee that if you're looking at food level, label, labels when you go to the grocery store and you're trying to decide between say two packages of bread, one that has 80 calories per slice but with few vitamins and minerals or the other with whole grain, which is gonna have more protein. It's gonna have three times the magnesium and more than double the fiber, the potassium, the vitamin B6, the zinc, then you should choose the nutrient dense option. And if you're concerned about the price point, the big thing about nutrient dense foods other than being important for your vital organs is that nutritionally dense food is very filling. So you can actually eat less food, but be totally satiated and have all of the healthy calories, healthy vitamins and healthy nutrients that you eat, even if you're paying a little bit more. So it's really those less expensive foods that are low with salt and sugars that when you eat them, you feel hungry again 30 minutes or an hour later. Whereas nutrient dense foods, no, you feel full immediately. So if you want more information on this subject, nutrient dense foods, um, I've put three resources on the Patreon blog. So please visit the Patreon blog. I'll have the transcript with all the foods I mentioned with the meal ideas that I mentioned and the three links. I've got a link here for the American Heart Association for Harvard Health and for the National Institute of Health. So be sure to check those out and start working on your nutritional density lifestyle today. As with always, uh, see you next time and be happy, be healthy and be whole next 50.